What's up guys, welcome to the Cross Trainer Series, where we aim to bridge the gap between real firearms training and airsoft for both civilian and military training. In this video, we're joined by our two guest instructors, Ryan and Mojo, who are both currently active duty law enforcement. Ryan, happy to be here. Been a cop about 15 years and uh, look forward to uh, the video. Uh, Mojo, been a cop now for about four years, uh, prior military, and I'm also very happy to be here. In this episode of the Cross Trainer Series, we're gonna be talking about slings and sling manipulation. In particular, two-point slings are one of the most common ways to run a rifle right now. Uh, and our two instructors, Mojo and Ryan, are going to be talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages of them, uh, as well as some use cases and if you need to transition, how to do so. So we'll pass it off to them now. Yeah, we'll dive into some basic manipulations with the uh, two-point sling. I have this one uh, configured in a way that suits me best. This is one way that you can set it up on a rifle. Now, kind of depending on where you put your QD attachments on the uh, rail can determine uh, how the gun is held. I run mine a little bit further forward on these SBR type weapons because it still allows me to keep my uh, traditional grip. Uh, obviously, if I was to move this back, it could uh, hinder my ability to get that grip. So I run the uh, QD far forward on this one. I have some other setups where I will run like an, H stay, an HK style clip on the top portion here. Uh, which uh, serves me well in transitions. I've just kind of worked that out through reps and training and found that it works good for me uh, running it on the top there. Looks a little strange, but nonetheless, it works sufficient and it works. And then off the back, you can see here, I run my uh, sling to the far side of the stock, which allows me to marry up with the gun without having the sling in the way. So again, you can run it on the inside and likely still have some efficient shooting uh, methods, which is fine for you, but this works well for me. Um, and I like to have it there, again, like I said, because it keeps it out of the way. Uh, a couple of, uh, uh, what one probably main concept to the two-point sling is the ability to have it kind of traditionally positioned, like you see here. Um, Mojo's got it traditionally positioned there. And then there's uh, another thing they call swimming in and swimming out of the sling. And that's gonna uh, take place when you're moving in and around structures uh, and also sets you up for needing to potentially swap shoulders. If you need to take the gun to the support side, it's gonna be difficult to do so in this traditional fashion because you can see it's gonna it's cut you off. Um, this one is maxed out, and even if I adjusted it some more, I'd still find quite a bit of trouble trying to transition this thing to my support side if I needed to for an injury, uh, maybe if I was picking up angles, which is a, a video for another time. But uh, nonetheless, it would be extremely difficult to still uh, operate this weapon in this fashion. So what we have folks do is come up, you elbow down and swim out of the sling. So it is now in what's called necklace mode. There's probably another term for it, but we commonly hear people say, oh, my sling is in necklace mode, or I you know, have, now have my two point sling uh, necklace around my neck because it is now basically still retaining it to your body, but it's just in a form that allows you a little bit more ability to bump shoulders if you need to. Yes, it's running across my neck. This is just a temporary position for me to affect some fire if I need to um, and then make adjustments, but it allows me that flexibility to actually move the gun back and forth. Transition methods are a, an entirely different thing. If we're doing, you know, fully uh, transitioning over the you know, hand placement and all that good stuff, but there is a bump method that allows you to transition in necklace mode. But you wanna remember, um, if you're gonna need to transition from rifle to pistol, it's probably best to simply swim back in. And now you've got that grip on the gun. This is how I've been doing it and how I was taught. One of the ways I was taught, I'm sure there's some other methods. Is there some insight or some points you can add to that? Absolutely. So I set mine up just slightly a little bit different, the same principles in mind. So we look at here, the outside portion of the rear of the buttstock. That's super important to me. Uh, I've had it back in the day where this was inside. I shoulder the gun and now there's another piece of plastic or material in the way where I, don't, I feel like I don't have a good cheek hold on the gun or I don't have a good stock, stock placement. With the front end uh, swing, swing swivel, I like to actually keep mine further back. What that allows me to do is not have the sling um, as loose or as tight. I have more range of, I guess, maneuverability. So I pull this as fur further back as I can. And because the further forward I have it, that's more tension on the sling. So I have a little bit more adjustability. So I kind of put it to the back and um, I like to keep my, my sling outside of the, like my, my support hand outside of the sling. As opposed to putting it like a little bit, little bit different. Just different. like everything else we do, it's all preference. Yeah. Like I prefer to be right-handed. He prefers to be left-handed. I don't understand why. It's just one of those things that we've argued over the years that I've known him, but he's, he's different and that's okay. That's okay. I love you so much. <laughs> so with that being said, I like to keep this thing a little bit further back and I like to keep this thing outside. Um, I feel like when I do manipulations and stuff, I don't want this thing to get in the way. That's just my personal preference. 
as it looks at that, we have other methods like maybe a single point sling. We, uh, a lot of us have transitioned to the two point slings, even the military, uh, a lot of law enforcement agencies. Back in the day, the cool thing was to have a single point sling. The problem we saw with single point slings, one point of connection between the gun. So that gun now is on a pendulum. And that's where you usually you'd find that one connection point would be at the junction between right the here. receiver extension and the receiver. Yeah, a lot of companies still put this stuff on the guns and that it works, but I've noticed that also with that being there, it gets in the way of my fire control and it hurts. Like when you manipulate the gun, sometimes it's a thing, but yeah, having that single point and when you try to stow the gun for whatever administrative actions or let's say in a law enforcement perspective, it's like, hey, if Ryan and I are holding on a guy, I'm like, I'm going hands on. So I need to go hands on. If I have a single point sling, if I bend over to cuff oh, a guy, yeah, it's, it's gonna hit him in the head and I'm gonna get in trouble. I don't want that. So what we can do is potentially tighten the sling up to the extent where it's super tight against your body. I can do what I need to do, no problem. I can put it on my back, whatever. And with a single point sling, usually can people see that you couldn't really see people do that. Um, single point slings were a thing when I was in my time in Afghanistan. A lot of the guys would loop the single point sling around their left arm, wear it like a necklace, and the rifle would be right here. And they would they'd stow it and they'd walk around with that to go to the chow hall, whatever. So that was the thing. And But in terms of manipulations, it's a lot easier to be able to support the gun on the two point sling. So like if I need to take some of the slack out of the sling, brace the gun, I could sit here all day with that and have sling tension to help me stabilize a shot at the further distances. That's a big one. Uh, there's a lot of precision shooting methods from, uh, I learned from the Marine Corps with the two point sling to be able to control the gun and give you more support. So that's a big one too. There's a lot of different methods for that. A lot of resources on YouTube for that as well. Um, the other method, so what I usually do, because I'm wearing kit, I have best song whenever I have a rifle, the sling is usually out. It's not usually sucked in as much. So when right. it's out, because we're accounting for the fact that I have plates on, armor, whatever. So because it's so loose, I have the ability to, what Ryan was saying earlier, I don't need to swim. I could bump over, work the gun that way, come back to safe, and I could also switch shoulders in entirety. So what I would do, support hand, back to mad will, bump the gun over, I could do that, and then swap it in place and work the gun that way. Super easy to do so. There's a lot of different methods that instructors teach to be able to switch shoulders. Find the method that works best for you. I find out that naturally, I'm like, I'm gonna come back here. I could either go forward with this hand, come back with this hand. I'll usually come back here so I can still fire from here, bump it over real quick, meet it in place, flop it over, work the safeties. That's usually how I found doing it works. Um, and yeah, I've had no problems with it. Uh, it works in the, t in the pinch you need it to and I don't need to dedicate anything else because a majority of the time, at least in cop work, if something's not going on, if the rifle comes out, it's gonna be, it's like this. And the pressure from the necklace, so that's why what he was saying right. with a necklace, it's very purpose driven. Right. Like if it's time to move around the houses and do whatever we need to do, we'll sling in a necklace. Like let's say put it into perspective, like we go to Copper Horse, uh, Copperhead and Iron Horse, we go one of those events. The moment we pass that line of departure, like game on, for like maybe the first couple hundred yards where I know there's not gonna be anyone there, I'll keep it like this. But once it's like, it's about to get real, Bet. Right, because it does allow you more maneuverability. It does, absolutely, because yeah. yeah. now I'm not anchored anywhere. That's why the necklace works so well. It's not anchored. If you have a good padded sling, right. it feels good. Well, okay, so I wanted to touch on both of those things as well. Yeah. Um, padded slings, that's kind of a more modern yeah. uh, change to slings, as well as both of these slings, as well as the ones that you guys use pretty regularly, are adjustable slings. Yes. So in the past, two-point slings were kind of a, a set length. Yeah. And so I think that's a lot of the reason why single points were popular is because you had a lot more range of motion. You do. And with non-adjustable slings, you almost always have to swim out. You do. Um, so adjustable slings allow you the option of kind of having the best of both worlds. Yep. And there are a variety of sling companies that offer adjustable slings. So really picking the one to your preference is gonna be ideal based on you know what you're doing with it, what you like the feel of, the look of, so on and so forth. Um, but being able to move around your sling points, being able to move around your sling and adjust it and then set that length to be the ideal usability between when you're wearing a plate carrier and when you're not gives you gives you that adjustment and that's really really important there are also slings like on that ms2 that allow you to or ms3 that allow you to convert point, it yeah. back into a single point mm -hmm. sling so there's there are also options there uh, although you won't probably be doing it often but you know there there are options for all of these things to personalize them to your use case it's all personally based on the individual um i guess the biggest thing with for us when we look at slings it's like is it padded? Is it adjustable? We're good. I've ran some of this really, really skinny slings, like this, just this material. It's, it looks like, my, like a razor got took to my neck. So I'm not a fan of that. So I have to have something that's padded so it feels good around my neck. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. And that's one of the other things. And for me, at least with this uh, centrifuge sling, like my biggest thing is like working on the road, 
as a patrol cop, literally as this thing stowed, I have the ability to stow it. If I'm traveling or doing whatever with it, all I have to do is put the sling in itself and there's its own little hook. And this is one of the other considerations I took into because it, it, within the sling, I have the ability to house it. So I could rock the gun, I could run the gun like such. Right. And if I need it, all I do is pull it back, sling comes back with no bungees, no other right. crazy stuff on it. So if you're not running a centrifuge sling, uh, you can always run a ranger band on your stock yep. to tuck the sling into. Um, Absolutely. You can, all, you can also, um, on some of the other adjustable slings, just go back around the stock Tuck the sling under, under your pistol, uh, grip. pistol grip and then tighten it. It's good for transport. Uh, transport, but, yeah. yeah. And so it, it, whatever you need it for at the time being, like let's say you're the administrative parts prior to starting a match, like at the airsoft game or whatever, and you just don't want the sling hanging about, you tighten the sling to itself. When it comes time to move, carry the gun. When it's time to get into some stuff, you pop the sling out, rock it. Start, start it's important rolling. to consider certain job tasks that you, you may have to do as well. Like folks that are gonna find themselves maybe climbing ladders would, would find a two point sling more beneficial than say a one point sling. So uh, if you're never gonna climb a ladder or not gonna be in that environment, then you know, a one point sling may be more, uh, Absolutely. Uh, you know, in, up your alley. But I would say two point slings for, for me personally have a, a wider range of use that's practical than a one, one point. Absolutely. As a final note, you guys touched on when you need to tighten your sling to go hands on. Yeah. Now that's something that you guys deal with in your line of work. Absolutely. In Airsoft, we really don't do hands-on sure. other people. We, we do. Medical stuff, like, right, right, like right, right. AMS. Like, right. So there, there have been times where you see dudes at AMS or wherever, Milson West, they, their slings are still loose and they want they got like to pick up around. a casualty yeah. and the next thing you know, they end up bumping the yeah. rifle in yeah. someone's head. Absolutely, yeah. Not, not necessarily in the aspect yeah. in which right. you were talking like right. arresting people right. and detaining but, suspects or whatever. Yeah. But. And the point I was getting to is th there are other things that we have to do in the game as well that don't require us to have yeah. our hand on a rifle, right? Whether you need to get intel or you need to activate you know, a, a switch or lever or, or do something that's in game that's part of the, the course of the game that yeah. you don't need to be holding on to something. It's Absolutely. nice to be able to just cinch something down so that it's not flopping as you're going to pick something up or, or to do something administrative. So. They have ladders there. They have yeah. all this plethora of different things that you'll be able, have to do. So obviously it's a yeah. good sling yeah. retained with good quality QD yeah. attachments points with rock uh, lock tighted uh, QD points, uh, like swivels that are like on the Rec 7 here from Barrett and like Make sure PCCs, PCIs, everything, pre comment checks, pre comment inspections. Like, check your stuff. Everything's locked tighted. Everything's need to be where it needs to be, and it's of quality. Because, again, you, a lot of people drop a lot of money into these things, and next thing you know, a swing silver breaks or something bad happens, and this thing is going down. I've heard of slings referred to as holsters for rifles. So, you can kind of, that sort of yeah. mindset for, for slings and their use. That's true. Yeah. So, the, the, the one needs to be like this. Oh, interesting. So when dudes walk around the travel hall and stuff like that, they just huh. do that. So we would go like on, like not on patrols, like not on combat patrols, yeah. but like they go to the travel hall, it's administrative, surely this super chill. That's cool. And honestly, very comfortable. I never thought to do that. Yeah, so that's one of the things that all my team leaders and so like literally walk around like this, it's chill. And it keeps it from dragging. It doesn't drag, it doesn't bounce. I mean, it bounces, sure, but it won't like, it's not anywhere else here where it's like when you're walking, it gets in your legs. There's another way you can use the two point with a pistol grip if you run it back to your- Oh yeah, you just cut, cut the other half, the yep. other half of it. You run it out max. If you run your, if you put that back to that QD, yep. and then run your two point out. Well, and just wrap the pistol grip. Doesn't mess up you max. You can do one of these numbers for Bending over, it keeps it to your torso. It won't dangle. Tighter. So. I do mine them with a mag, but you could do that with a lot of different things. Yeah. And it also kind of relieves hot spots or pressure points yeah. on the right. Because it's another by, angle. By doing point. that, you can do it. There's really no right way to do it. You can do it. So he's doing it on the magwell. Yeah. You, you can, can do, do it in a magwell. You can do it on pistol grip. Doesn't matter. And then obviously the tighter that the two point is, the more it's going to hold you. So if you're doing those administrative tasks where bending is a thing, that also orients the barrel away from your victim, um, stays Dangle with your body. You can take a knee and it's not in your. I'm frustrated by the fact that I never thought of these things. But hey, we're all learning together. We are all learning together. It's Thank okay. you guys. So that just about wraps up uh, ways to manipulate uh, a sling, ways to operate your rifle while utilizing a sling, the advantages to using a two-point. Um, if you want to learn even more stuff, you're going to want to stay tuned to the rest of the Cross Trainers series here on our channel. Thank you guys for being here. See you next time.